before. He may lie with you tonight in return for your son's mandrake. So she's, she's selling her night with her husband to her sister in order to, you know, get more time with her husband. I guess, I guess they had like a rotating schedule of when each would go or I don't know. There's, there's, what's that? Okay, let me see. You know, there are a lot of commentaries on the word mandrake and I'm going to see it, what it says about it here. And uh, give me just a second and we'll look this up. But I, I don't really know how they worked out the whole wife thing and whose night it was and all that. But um, it seems like they did have some arrangement because here she's selling her night to him. So, okay, please, go ahead. Uh, that I've never heard. It's not mentioned in the Bible. But um, as a matter of fact, I, there's something I read about mandrakes, and so I'm glad you asked it. But M-A-N-A, -A, um, I want to... Yeah, but I'm, I'm not seeing it as the problem, so I wonder if the King James Version has a different word for them. Oh, here it is. I'm sorry. 1736, and I'm going to let you know what they say here, and this is not the greatest um, uh, indication of this, but 1736, 14, I think that mandrakes are not really an identifiable plant, if I remember properly, but uh, 1736. I've got a little commentary here on it. Okay, please, go ahead. It says, uh, the mandrake has fleshy forked roots that resemble the lower part of a human body and were therefore superstitiously thought to induce pregnancy. Oh, I got gotcha. you. That makes sense. And this one here says it, it does say that it's an aphrodisiac. So apparently, you know... It, it, Reuben must have been looking out for mom here. Let's go have some more children. I want another brother or something. And so she says, well, you know, I'll sell you some of these for a night and whatever. That makes more sense now. But, um, if she was cagey, she said, well, I don't need a Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure, I'll sell them to you. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Oh, good. <laughs> anyway, there you go. That answers the mandrake thing right there. So please, go ahead. surely hired you with my son's mandrakes. So he lay with her that night. And obviously... She didn't need the mandrakes. Yeah. There you go. So she... Rachel wants to have children. She's not been having children. She asked for this thing to get her pregnant. And Leah's like, sure, I'll do that because I'm, you know, no problem. So she gets another night with her husband. And poor Jacob, he's been out in the fields all day. And the first thing he sees when he comes home is this lady saying, you've got to come in to me tonight. And he, <laughs> no, he didn't. He didn't object at all. But, <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh. So what was the result? First, what, 18 are we? 17. 17. God gave heed to Leah, and she conceived and bore Jacob a, a fifth son. Then Leah said, God has given me my wages because I gave my name to my husband. So she named him Issachar. Meaning? Wages. Wages. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sex is having another baby. Okay? There you go. She has given me my wages. Issachar means wages. All right. Verse, verse 19. Leah conceived again and bore a sixth son. And then Leah said, God has endowed me with a good gift. Now my husband will dwell with me because I have bore him six sons. So she named him Zebulun. Zebulun, okay, which means dwelling. All right, so we're going to go to Isaiah. And we're going to see where is this. Probably Isaiah... Nine, it might be six, but hang on, let me see. It, it always helps if you keep going in the right direction, Charlie. Let's see here. Um, Ecclesiastes, Isaiah, and I think it is ver chapter nine, and it says here, Nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is in distress, when at first he lightly esteemed the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, then afterward more heavily oppressed her by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan in Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. I'm in chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. And those who dwelt in the land of the sea, the shadow of death upon them, a light has shined. Okay, so there, Zebulun and Naphtali are both mentioned there in the dwelling. And so that's just a little, uh, what do you call it, a little uh, side note about Zebulun mentioned in Isaiah. Okay, and that was up in the north 
of Israel by Galilee, and that is the part of the land that had been carried away by Sennacherib, king of Assyria, in 722 AD. All right, and so they were already exiled, and they'd been afflicted. They'd been, uh, uh, you know, gone into exile for that. But some of the people of the land remained. Never let anybody tell you that there are ten lost tribes of Israel. It, they don't exist. People loved even the Jewish people bring that up because they've heard it their whole life. Ten tribes were exiled, but there was a remnant from all of the tribes. As a matter of fact, I've got the study here somewhere, and it's on my website, that almost every one of the twelve tribes of Israel is mentioned after that exile of the ten tribes. Almost all of them. If you go to, um, who was Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, what tribe did she belong to? The old lady that dwelt in the temple for eight years. She belonged to the tribe of Asher. Paul belonged to the tribe of Benjamin, you have Simeon that blessed uh, Jesus when Jesus was brought in. Certainly was from the tribe of Simeon. So you have these people. And then what does Paul say in, um, uh, where is it? It's in the book of Acts. And I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but seeing as how I brought it up, I might as well keep you guys with the doctrine sound. It says Paul is speaking. Oh, no, we'll go to Peter. Paul says it too, but we'll go to Peter because it's a little easier to find. I think it's in... Um, I hope it is. If not, then I'm just going to quote you what I want and we're going to go on. But uh, the day of Pentecost, um, let's see here. Uh, no, Acts, Peter speaking. Um, yeah, it may not be though, but um, anyway, Paul and Peter both say it in the book of Acts. I do believe that it's Paul that I want to see though. Um, oh, I know, we're going to go to Acts. I know, I know. Um, this is where that's Ananias, Saul of Tarsus, so we're going to go back a little bit. Let's see here. I, it, I'm just trying to find the one that's easier to get to quickly so I don't waste your time. So I don't mean to sound waffling on this, but um, all right, we're going to go to um, Pete, Paul is speaking in chapter 22. By the way, chapter 21 of Acts ends with a comma in the middle of a sentence. If that doesn't show you divine inspiration, I don't know what else could, but very interesting. And um, let me see if I can find this. Um, uh, okay, I don't want 22 anyway. I want him speaking before Agrippa is where I want. Festus and Agrippa and Paul complaints could not prove them themselves. King Agrippa comes in and so now I'm in chapter 26 and um, Yes, I'm, that's somewhere in this area, and um, Paul stretched out his hand, he spoke, I'm in chapter 26 now, and um, anyway, right in this speech, when Paul is speaking to Agrippa, he says, this is the hope that the 12 tribes hope for even to this day. So, and he, it's said several times in the book of Acts, it's said elsewhere in the New Testament, but if you see that, the 12 tribes... Um, where is that? This is the hope. I myself happy to concern all things. Questions? Uh, Pharisee. Oh, here it is. Verse 7. 26 7. It says, To this promise, our 12 tribes earnestly serving God night and day hope to attain. He was very clear about it there. It's elsewhere as well that there are 12 tribes of Israel and they were not completely destroyed. God promised to keep a remnant of them. He did. There are no 12 tri lost tribes of Israel. So if anybody ever comes to you and says, we are the 12 lost tribes or the 10 lost tribes of Israel, like the Mormons or British uh, Israelism or these uh, lower, um, smaller Church of God sects or anything, there are no 10 lost tribes of Israel. And that's important to remember because you never know, you might move someday and join a church without knowing it and all of a sudden you start hearing that they are part of the 12 lost, 10 lost tribes. They're not. Okay, so be advised that the Bible, promi God promised in the Bible to preserve a remnant of the Jewish people and he has faithfully done that. Okay, so just wanted to get that out of the way and I'll bring that up from time to time as we go because it's just one of those sore spots with me. People that claim they have some mystical knowledge or some special connection with God that other people don't, they don't. The Jews are the Jews, we are Gentiles, we are grafted into the people of Israel, but we are not Jewish people. And if a Jew comes and sits in here, they're not a Gentile, they are a Jew, 
Okay, there is a difference even though we are all one in the Messiah. All right, don't mean to get off too far, but please go ahead. Next one. Somebody, uh, somebody else, 21. Where were you? 21. 30, 21. And afterwards she bore a daughter and named her Dinah. Okay, Dinah. Anybody see anything in the name Dinah that might reflect something you've already read? Dinah. Chevrolet? Almost. <laughs> sure. Dinah. Who else had a D at the beginning of their name? Dan. Dan. Dan means judge. This means judgment. It's a, it's a form of the same word. Dinah and Dan. Okay, just so you know. All right. There you go. All right, please go ahead. Verse 22. God remembered Rachel and God gave heed to her and opened her womb. Finally. Finally, Rachel. Go ahead. Okay, who else said they had reproach? Sarai. Okay, well, Sarai kind of, I don't know if she directly said it. She said, will a woman in her old age have it? And she might have used the term reproach. So, I, um, that's correct. It was Elizabeth specifically said, the Lord has taken away my reproach, and that would be in uh, Luke chapter 1. I'll read it real quick. You don't need to go there unless you want to. But um, Luke chapter 1, and it says here... Um, uh, is it 25? All right. Thus the Lord has dwelt with me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among the people. So there you go. Elizabeth specifically said, Sarai may have said that, but I don't think she used the word reproach. She just kind of... That might have been a little strong for her. To yeah, right. But uh, uh, anyway, so Rachel is now free of her reproach. Okay. So go ahead. Verse 24. So what does Joseph mean? Yosef. No, nope. may he add. Okay, or he will add. I guess is probably better. He will add. Yosef. All right. And uh, so she's not only saying that she has one son, but he's going to add another son to me. Maybe that's a prophecy of something to come. Gee, well, will we find out? I, I'm so excited. I can't wait. Please, go ahead. <laughs> now it came about when Rachel had born Joseph, Jacob said to Laban, Send me away, and I will go in my own place. I'll go to my own place and to my own country. Give me wives and my children for whom I have served you, and let me depart. For you yourself know my service, which I have rendered you. Okay, so it's probably right at the end of the 14 years. He's done his hard labor. The time to go home and see mom and dad or whatever he's thinking is, is ready. And so verse 27 kind of convinces me about what I was saying about Laban earlier. Go ahead. Okay, that's okay. Um, God gave me wives and my children for whom I have served you. And let me depart, for you yourself know my service, which I have rendered to you. But Laban said to him, if now it pleases you, stay with me. I have divined that God has blessed me on your account. He had to divine that. Right. He figured that out for himself. Absolutely. Well, he, he's, he's figured it out that he is being blessed because of Jacob. And so, and it's probably something he knew all along, but now the time has come. Take care, Dave. Have a great one. The time has come for him to lose his, his blessing, and so he's going to try to figure out a way to get him to stay. Go ahead. Verse 28. And he continued. Name me your wages and I will give it. That's a pretty clear indication that he is, he knows that he is being blessed and he's saying, whatever you want, just stay and I will give it to you. Okay, it's very clear indication that Laban knows where his, his profit is coming from. If you've got a really good employee and you don't want him to leave, you're going to say, just name it and we'll, anything we can do to get you to stay, we'll do it. And that is what he did there. Okay. But he said to him, you yourself know how I have served you, and how your cattle have fared with me. For you had little before I came, and it was increased to a multitude. And the Lord has blessed you wherever wherever I turn. But now, when shall I when shall I provide for my own household also? Okay, he said, wherever I turn, the term in Hebrew is at my foot. In other words, wherever my foot goes, we use the term wherever I turn. It's things I'm being blessed. I mean, we're at my foot. Same, same idea, but that's where we get our expression from. 